Hello class, welcome back to part two of lesson four. Uh, this time we're gonna be talking about surface area of right cones. And the reason that we did the pyramids first is because uh, we need to understand how we um, do a pyramid before we can do a cone. So um, a little reminder, uh, the surface area formula for a right regular pyramid with a slant height S uh, is below. So the surface area is equal to the lateral area, and remember the lateral area is the outside area, so the different sides of a pyramid, and plus the base area, which is the bottom. Um, so it was always a half times the slant height, and then the base, and we took into account the different lengths um, a base could be, depending on if the um, shape had all different, all the same sides or different sides um, in length. So the perimeter of the regular base um, would be the sum of the triangular faces of the pyramid. If the base was five, then five plus five plus five uh, would give you 15 for a triangular um, pyramid. Um, another five would be 20 for a square or a rectangular pyramid. Um, the difference for right cones is that their base is continuous. So you can imagine that um, the cone is made up of a whole bunch of tiny, tiny pyramids, um, the triangular faces that are so small you can't tell. They're just all smoothed out. Um, so cones have a circular base. The apex is still located right above the center. Um, so it makes a right angle with the base. Uh, and the slant height, there's going to be only one slant height for a cone because there is, it's smooth all the way around. There is no way for there to be a difference on this side compared to this side. It is always the same. Um, so slant height is the distance on the curved surface between the apex and a point on the circumference of the base. So the circumference is the area around a circle or the, the distance around a circle. So, um, deriving the formula for a cone. So as the triangular faces get more and more and more, you can see that they become closer and closer and closer to a cone. Um, so the lateral area of the pyramid is a half uh, times the slant height uh, multiplied by the perimeter of the base. Now the perimeter of the base is actually um, the circumference. And the circumference formula um, is given right uh, on the next line, it is 2 pi r. So circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So um, it is just like the triangle formula in that you have a half times the slant height and then times the, except it's the base circumference. So uh, that's 2 pi r that goes there. Okay. So uh, when you take a half and two, that is the same. So we can rearrange it a little bit. It is just pi rs. And that is the lateral area for a cone. It's equal to pi rs. If we go and add the base as well, um, the base is a circle. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. So the surface area of um, the cone, so that's the lateral area and the base, is pi r s plus pi r squared. Uh, so there's two parts to it. This is the um, lateral area, and that is the base area. Those are the two parts. Let's get to an example. Two examples right here. So calculate the surface area of the following cones. Um, the one on the left we'll start with, uh, and we are already given its slant height. So that might not be the case for every single problem, but we are given the slant height here, so we will just need to use that. We won't need to use Pythagorean's theorem to find out the slant height. So the surface area of a cone is equal to pi rs plus pi r squared. And radius is the distance from the middle to the edge, which is given. 
and the slant height is from the apex to the circumference to the perimeter and that is given. Pi is a constant, it is just a number. We don't have to look that up, it's 3.14. Should be on your calculator as well. So, pi times the radius of five times the slant height of 13 plus pi times five squared. Um, punch this stuff into your calculator, that's 204.1 plus 78.5. Uh, these are all in centimeters. We'll add that at the end. That's 282.6 centimeters, and that's centimeters squared because we're talking about area. Okay, so 282 centimeters squared, 204 for the lateral area, 78.5 centimeters squared for the base. Um, and you add those up. So when we're talking about the surface area of a cone, there's really only two things that you need to know, the radius and the slant height. You can find everything else from that. Uh, let's do the example that you can see that's right beside it. Instead of give, getting the uh, slant height this time, we're just getting, we just get the regular height. So we're going to use, need to use Pythagorean's theorem to find out what the slant height is. And if you remember, uh, when we're finding out the slant height, it is always equal to the root of a squared plus b squared, which is the height and the radius or the distance from the middle to the edge, um, which is in this case, the radius because it's a circle. So that is equal to the root of, the height is seven squared plus the radius is two squared. So we will have the slant height equaling 7.28 feet. Now that is the number that we wanna use along with the radius, which is already known as two. So the surface area of the cone is equal to pi rs, and we know all of these, plus pi r squared. And again, we know both of those. So that is equal to pi times two times 7.28 plus pi times two squared. That is, let's see, 45.72 plus 12.56. And the surface area then, is 58, we add them together, 0.28 feet squared. So it is just moving uh, from the slant height and the radius, plug it into the formula, and then being able to punch it into our calculators properly. Um, let's go into the next example. Uh, actually, the next one is a try it on your own. So pause it here, uh, try it on your own, and restart and you can see me give it a go. Okay, welcome back. I hope that you gave it a try. Uh, let's see if I can make this work. Yes, I can. Okay, so let's do the try it on your own. We are given a cone that uh, we have the height of the cone, but we do not have the slant height. So it's gonna be like the previous question where we are required to find it using Pythagorean's theorem. So we know that when we use Pythagorean's theorem to find it, the slant height is equal to the root of a squared plus b squared, which is the height and the radius, um, which we have indirectly. We have the diameter, so uh, half the diameter is the radius. So that would be the root of two squared plus 3.6 divided by two, so half of that is 1.8 squared, so that means the slant height is equal to 2.69 centimeters. This is a very small cone, it's like an inch high. Um, now, uh, we have the slant height, we can plug it into our formula for the um, surface area of a cone because we also know the radius, the radius being 1.8 centimeters. So the surface area is equal to pi r s plus pi r squared. I would recommend putting that onto your formula sheet. Uh, you can label that this is the lateral area and this is the base area uh, to remind yourself. Um, but we know what the, all these are. So pi times the radius is 1.8. The slant height we found to be 2.69 plus pi times 1.8 squared. Punch those into your calculator. We have 15.20 plus 10.17, 
that's all in centimeters squared, but I'll just write it here, 25.37 centimeters squared. I like to circle my answer so that everyone can see it. If you didn't get that one, try to look back and see um, where it went wrong. We will move to another question, and then there's a try it on your own after that. And then you can do the do nows that are in the booklet. Isn't that exciting? So, a cone has a base diameter of 10 centimeters and a surface area of 283 centimeters squared. Calculate its height. Okay, so this is going to be a situation where we have to work backwards from having the surface area. Uh, it tells us the diameter is 10, so right away I'm going to write down the radius is 5 centimeters, and the surface area is 283 centimeters squared. When I don't immediately know what to do, uh, I often just like write down what I know and compare it to a formula that I've been using in and around that section. So the surface area of a cone is pi r s plus pi r squared. And if I check out this formula, um, the slant height is the only thing that I don't know. Um, I know what the surface area is, I'm given it. Pi is just a constant, and r I've gotten from the diameter. So if I can rearrange this formula a little bit, I can find out what the slant height is and work backwards using Pythagorean's theorem to determine um, what the height of the cone is. So there's several steps to this problem. Let's get into it. Um, first of all, let's rearrange the equation so that we're uh, isolating um, s. So I'm going to subtract pi r squared from both sides so that it disappears from here, goes to the other side, and then I'm going to divide both sides by pi r s to get rid of it on this side. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if I take the surface area and I want to subtract pi r squared from both sides, then I'll have subtract pi r squared here, and then this is actually gone. That is no longer there. I now want to get rid of this portion, so I'm going to divide everything by that. Now I'm going to have to divide both portions by pi r, and that will get me the slant height. That is what I want to know. So now I can plug all of my numbers into here, what I already know, to get s. So 283 subtract pi r is 5, and that is squared, all divided by pi times 5. That will give me the slant height. Uh, let's see, we plug that all in. We find the slant height to be 13 centimeters. That's a nice round number. I like how that worked out. Um, now we are going to find out what the actual height of the pyramid is. So we are looking at that portion of the triangle. We know that the slant height is 13, and we know that the radius is 5. So we'll call this A. Um, if we start off with the formula A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, we have these two, so we need to rearrange for A. That means that c squared is equal to, pardon me, that means that a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared, and then we'll square root all of this. So a is equal to the square root of c squared minus b squared. We'll then plug in our numbers. Uh, that's the slant height and the radius. So the root of 13 squared minus 5 squared equals 12 centimeters. And that is the height. So because we designated h as a on the side in Pythagorean's theorem, we were able to find out that the height of the cone or end of this triangle is 12 centimeters. So we worked backwards. We started with the surface area and the radius, we found the slant height, and then we found the actual height of the cone. And it makes sense that the height of the cone is 
uh, less than the slant height because there should be farther for the slant height to go. If you do this and you get a different answer where uh, the height of the cone should is something like 30, that's larger than the slant height. That's not something that makes sense. Um, this will be a time now for another try it on your own. So give the video a pause. Uh, go ahead and work on this one. And when you're done, unpause it and we'll give it a try. Okay. Uh, if you're back, you can see that the lateral area of a cone is given as 220 centimeters squared. That's the lateral area of the cone is 220 centimeters squared. So that means uh, that is not the bottom. When we are discussing this particular question, uh, at least right now, we are not going to think about the bottom circle on the cone. It says that the, di that the diameter is eight centimeters, which means that the radius is four centimeters. Uh, and we need to determine the height of the cone to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So the lateral area of a cone has a formula of only pi r s. There is no bottom part. So the second portion that we would usually write, the pi r squared, it is not there. It is only this portion. So we have pi and we have r. So again, we're just going to find s. It's just simpler than last time to rearrange this equation. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. This time I'm going to plug in my numbers before I rearrange. A couple of different ways you can do algebra. Um, so the lateral area of the cone I know is 220 centimeters. And that is all equal to pi times the radius of 4 times s, which is what I want to know. Now to get everything on the left hand side and get s all by itself, I need to divide by both of these. So I'm going to have left over 220 divided by pi times 4 is equal to the slant height. Uh, the numbers are already plugged in, so now I can just do it into my calculator and I see that the slant height is 17.5 centimeters. So if the slant height is 17.5 centimeters, that means that um, I can use that and the radius to find out what the uh, height of the cone is. And if you remember from the last problem, we used the formula A is equal to the root of C squared minus B squared. And that is the slant height and that is the radius. The slant height must be C squared all of the time. So that equals the root of 17.5 squared minus the radius we determined was 4, so 4 squared, um, which comes out to A for the height being equal to 17 centimeters. It's not 17 centimeters squared, just 17 centimeters because it is a length. Uh, again, it makes sense that it is less than the slant height, uh, and it also makes sense that it's barely less than the slant height because the radius is actually so small compared to the height of the cone. Um, that's all for today. Hope this was helpful. There's an exit slip and questions for you to do um, in the document, and next time we'll be doing 1.5. Thank you very much.